Good evening. You're watching The Digital Age, and I'm James Goodale. Will a news aggregator make it? You may wonder what a news aggregator is. We are going to tell you, and we're going to interview Michael Wolf this evening, who is a news aggregator. So, find out. You know, I would prefer just to go back to the old days and just be a good old-fashioned writer, but those days are gone. Well, we should tell everybody that you are still an old-fashioned writer for the Vanity Fair, and you've got a terrific media column, and also you, you had a great column in, the, uh, in New York Magazine. Well, let's get cut to the chase, as they say. I'm going to put up a, a video now. I want to say, get it on the table, is that I'm trying to put newspapers out of business. Why is it you want to destroy newspapers? I would love it if newspapers could continue for the rest of my life and my children's life, um, but they're not going to continue. Techno technology comes along, it's an industrial transformation, and things change. So you can either change with them or, um, or you can be um, uh, just uh, fighting the fight that you're going to lose. Well, that's a very Olympian view. Can I just quote what we just saw? Please. Okay. What I want to say, get it on the table, is that I want to put newspapers out of business. You just gave me a lot of, um, you know, I was soft being, stuff. I was being nice, yes. You were being uh, nice, but now, come on, you want to put newspapers out of business. I do. But well, yes, no, I, I, I actually, this is actually totally serious that if I could, if I could redesign reality, I would say, I love newspapers. I've been in the newspaper business all my life. My parents were in the newspaper business. Um, but they are over with. They're finished. They may not exactly know it. And so I am here to hasten this, this, this demise. I am here to say, um, oh, come, come on, everybody. Everybody knows what's going on. Let's, let's not fool ourselves any longer. Let's get with the program. Let's, let's do this. And, and also, I'm, the other thing I'm saying to newspapers, and I say to newspaper people all, all the time, this is a great opportunity. This is, we now have technology. It works better than what we had before. That was, that was something that, that, um, that now we can see as just a collection of, of relic, fairly gross inefficiencies. We now have this, this new thing. It costs much less money. It gives you much more information. It gives you information at a cheaper cost. Um, and it lets you do much more of it. You can save it, you can search it, you can send it. Uh, what's not to love? All right, so what's not to love is Newser. We didn't say what Newser was, so we're going to tell everybody Please. what Newser is. Okay, now, if you look at this, uh, what would I say, home page? I don't know. What do you call your front page? We call it the grid. Well, that's no good. Uh, the audience doesn't okay. understand grid. The, the home page. When you come okay, on this to is the, the site, newser.com, okay. okay, this, this is, is what, what you'll see. Okay, this is what newser.com looks like, okay? And the first thing you see from Newser is this page, which has a lot of people on it, including Sarah Palin. So you click Sarah Palin, okay? And then what comes on? Tons and tons of Sarah Palin, America's favorite sweetheart. Just one picture after another. You want to know more about Sarah Palin. So you click Sarah Palin, and you get a big takeout. Is that what news is all about? It gives you news in, a, in an efficient way and actually, we hope, in an entertaining way. Okay, now we've got this phrase out there, which we haven't explained to anybody. It's called news aggregator. You said at the top of the show you hated the, the word, but what does it mean? Okay, well, let me step back and say that the news business has always been an aggregation business. What we do is we gather, we gather the news that's available. We gather the news reports. Now, it just used to be that there was much, much less to gather. Now, an aggregation, an aggregator really has a function because you have to, there is so much out there. You cannot take it all. Used to be that if you're a well-informed person, all you had to do was read the New York Times. Now that's a laughable idea. If you just read the New York laughable Times. Laughable idea yeah. to read the New York Times? If you only read the New York Times, then you are a, um, um, a, a highly parochial person. Highly parochial. Highly so parochial. Um, that means limited. Limited. Um, um, you have to do other things. There are this. This we're, we're, we are in this um, this maelstrom of information of news, which everybody has a piece of it. How do you keep up? 
Um, that's my job. That's what Newser okay, does. So, so basically what you're saying is in the old days, you could pick up one paper and it would have a correspondent here, it would have a news service there. They put it all together so they're an aggregator. Exactly. Now we've got the internet and there's tons of stuff out there, including the New York Times, by the way. And what you're doing is you're going around the internet and you're aggregating it so somebody can look at what your view is of, of the world in a sense of all the important exactly of, of the of the important stuff. And uh, uh, so and, in a in a yeah. in a nutshell, you can come you can come to to Newser and you can get the New York Times and you can get the local papers where there's local news and you can get the international papers, the Guardian, the Times of London. It all comes together and you can do it very, very quickly. Now I don't want to use a fancy word here, but there is a fancy word that drives the internet, and it's a mathematical formula, effectively, that people call algorithm. And uh, what the algorithm does is, it, in the first instance, pulls all this stuff together for you. Is that right? Sure. And did you invent that algorithm? You yourself, we've, Michael we, Wolf? We've invented um, and the algorithm that we use. Yes, has been invented by. Um, um, uh, by my colleagues at Newser. Okay, so right now, uh, at this stage of the discussion, you hit the button and you don't do anything and all the news comes pouring in. Is that right? Uh, 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 up to a point. So, um, but I mean, the first point tens is of thousands of news stories come pouring in to our filter every day, actually, many times throughout the day. At that point, as they go into silos and as they are um, um, uh, qualified by the following, um, the following standards, the following interest levels, then they go to our editors who then make the final decision. So it's not as if this is just machines. It's machines and then we have editors and then it goes to writers who take these stories, take that New York Times story, you know the New York Times does a 1200 word story we reduce it to 120 words, sometimes 60 words. And here's what I would like to say. You don't miss much. Well, as a matter of fact, this is not the first time you've said it. What we do is we take the NYT 1,200-word story, that's what you just said, right? And we reduce it to 100 words, you said maybe a little, or less, actually. And then this is what you didn't say. And be damned if you don't miss much. Remember, I come out of the New York Times, my first job, the New York Times, and I look at it and I say to myself, no, no, there must be something more here. We've done our, our synopsis, and I go and I read the article and I say, nothing. When you were at the New York Times, you were out there hustling, working, turning in copy, putting in eight hours of hard, of hard work. Does it make you feel a little embarrassed that somebody's done that and then all of a sudden, you had an algorithm plus an editor and you've taken all the work away from that guy? Well, that's called technology. Oh, it's called tech. <laughs> it's called progress. <laughs> it's called progress? It's called, I, I can bring you, and let's think, let's, let's not pity the poor reporter at the New York Times, let's think of the end user. That's what this is about, uh, the customer. And what the customer gets is uh, more news in less time. That's great. That's what everybody wants. Uh, can I say, uh, tell you what Murray Murdoch, I'm uh, not Murray Murdoch, Rupert Murdoch said. I, I know everything that Rupert okay. Murdoch has said, but please. Okay, he, this is what he describes, what you just described. Mm. They are parasites or tech tapeworms in the intestine of the net. And the reason he's saying that is, what are you doing? I mean, all you're doing is taking someone else's work and you're reducing it to, uh, uh, you know, 120 words, 80 words, uh, but if the person hadn't written in the first place, you wouldn't have anything to do. Um, there are two points. For I know um, Rupert very well. I wrote Rupert's biography. I spent a year with the man. Here's what you should know. He has never unassisted been on the web. He doesn't use technology. It's a foreign thing to him. Um, it's, um, um, it is evil to him. Um, so the progress that's being offered here, I mean, he's like a guy on a horse and there's the, uh, the automobile com coming by. Um, he refuses to acknowledge 
that, that, there, that there is a net gain here, a net gain for customers. He wants the newspapers, he, newspapers to continue to exist. He wants to continue to run them, um, and, um, um, and he wants to see himself as first, last, and always a newspaper man. Well, I just wonder if there's a little uh, economic inconsistency in your articulation of what you're doing. We start off the show by saying um, two things. One, I think it's fair to say you want them dead. Uh, and number two, even if you didn't want them dead, they're dying and will be dead, okay? Then on the second hand, you say that you take the very material that they're putting out now as a dying person and you use it. So the question now becomes, if in fact you are right and they die, where are you going to be as a news aggregator because you won't have any news to aggregate? When we started this um, um, almost three years ago, we had um, about 90 percent of what we had came from established traditional media sources. Tell us what they are. Um, you know, from across the board, from local New York newspapers, Times, AP, absolutely. Wall absolutely. You have Wall Street Journal too. Uh, Wall Street Journal, yes. Even the uh, the European papers, the the they came from printed sources. Um, it's now down to about um, fifty percent, a little less than fifty percent, comes from printed sources, and the rest is the wealth of new sources that have grown up in this medium, native native internet news. Um, um, uh, sites, sources, et cetera. Um, and so 50 percent is still what do we call it new media. It's old media. Still, and 50 percent is new media. So exactly, yeah. exactly. So, and I would I would uh, uh, assume that um, that that this will continue. We have certainly not in the time I've been doing this. We don't see that there's less news, even as newspapers go into. Uh, bankruptcy across the country. Um, newspapers are consolidated. Um, there's less money spent on television news. We don't see less news. We see much, much more news, um, and um, and and we see a greater a, a, a greater need and a greater urgency for somebody to come along and um, make sense out of it. Put it together. Make it efficient. Um, tell me what I have to know is what our customers are saying to us. But this other, other news certainly doesn't have uh, the reliability in, that we think we get when somebody edits Michael Wolf's copy. I right think, now, and I, I, matter, I might say, matter of fact, you've got a column that goes out there. No one edits that column, I would assume. Is that right? Uh, n n somebody does edit somebody that column. Yes, but most but, people think, um, most people think, let me just make my point here, that if you are a member of an organization, you put in your copy, the organization looks at it, and just because two people are looking at it more than one at the very basic level, it may be and probably is a lot more reliable I'd, than, I'd than argue, the others. I'd argue that that's not true, um, and it's not true on a couple of levels. Um, yeah, the New York Times is a is a is a um, is a great and, and careful and thorough news organization. Um, as for the 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 great number of papers around this country, they're dreadful. Uh, they're just, uh, you know, the Chicago Tribune. You want to trust that paper? Forget about it. Um, it's um, these are these are uh, sources that number one have have cut resources over over um, over two generations, and newspapers haven't really cared anyway. Um, it 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 is a myth that 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 the gatekeepers, the information gatekeepers, are are thorough and reliable and constant. And I would I would argue that you get much more of a vetted of a vetting of of a of a collective attention of 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 people saying, hey, that's not true in this new medium. It's one so of its great so, virtues. So you you're you're saying that you're gonna replace in my example, the person who's editing it, because you're going to gather all this stuff with the computer, with an algorithm, and it comes in. You have editors, right? We do. So your editors are giving it a second look, and then you, you I think you told me you have writers also, exactly, right? Exactly, exactly. So what you're saying is you've got two levels of of uh, review, and we that have, may be the same. We have that. We also we also have there that there is you know this this happens in lightning speed on online. Something is posted by by us, by a blog, by 
by anybody else. And then there is this, um, 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 this attention, um, or what my friend Jim Sirwicky at the New Yorker calls the wisdom of the crowds. They come in, and 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 there is you can you can respond to this um, to whatever is online um, in lightning speed. You don't have to write a letter to the editor, which appears in the New York Times um, uh, three days later. So you're taking. I understand what you're saying. You're taking stuff from blogs and putting it in your uh, publication and some blogger would be next to the greatest writer, the Paul uh, Krugman. Wall Street Journal. Yeah, Wall absolutely. Street Journal that. Absolutely. It, it's full of, well, how about Twitter? Do you have tweets? Tweets in your publication? Uh, we, we don't, but we should. And we will. Why don't you? I, you, you it's a it's an internal debate right oh, now about about how to how to do them uh, how to how to uh, how to integrate um, how do you, but, look, but we will okay so tweets the best example of what I'm about to say mm -hmm. but how in the world when you're pulling stuff up from any old blogger if I can put it that way could be me or it could not be me absolutely uh, you know, we, we would and be delighted. You could, and and then you're into tweets and I guess you wouldn't even know who the tweeter is would you you might not even know who the blogger is as far as that goes. You're taking all this, what I would think, junk, and uh, you're putting it in, and, uh, okay, you're editing it, and you're writing it, so to speak, but you have no idea in the world where it's coming from other than from the blog. In other words, you don't know if the guy who put it on the blog is absolutely nuts, a phony, a fraud, but in the algorithm doesn't know either. Algorithm picks it up, and is that what you're doing? Let me even go a step further go than a step this. Further. <laughs> um, what we are going to do in the process of doing this, and this will in the next three or four weeks, um, we will launch this, is we are giving users the opportunity to post the news that they want to post. So it, it won't even come. It won't come through our, our algorithms. It won't go through our editors. It is just anybody, anybody, anywhere. But, but from a safety point of view, excuse me for interrupting, that's... Maybe better. In other words, if I find a story I like, uh, that story I like might be from the Wall Street Journal. Might be. Yeah. Might be from somewhere well, that's else. That's different than making up the story myself. I mean, I think that's more more reliable. The, the posting. Well, let me just uh, turn use that Please. as a segue to talk about uh, how you're doing and how these uh, other sure. sites are are working. Uh, if I may, I'd like to put up a, a chart, and this chart shows Newser, which is a news aggregator, against the Daily Beast, which is run by Tina Brown. Sure. Uh, it is also a news aggregation site. Now, Newser had a blip upward. Looking at this chart, uh, is at about 500,000, and let's say that. Uh, the Daily Beast is a million five comments. This service, and I think right. the Daily Beast, this service undercounts by uh, by about half. Um, um, and there's a big debate over this about what to count, and they discount um, uh, home office, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but um, um, yeah, well, the Daily Beast is terrific. Um, I think I think Tina has done a great job. She's not really an aggregator. Most of what she does is create original content. Um, now the difference between us is that um, is that she's spent you know, uh, you know big money, um, and uh, and we've spent little money, um, and we believe that one of the challenges in this in this this medium is how to get this to pay. Um, it is a very 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 tricky proposition. The whole cost structure of of, of media changes from online from offline to online. Uh, I, would, I would argue that, that Tina is an, is an old model, um, that she's spent an, enor an enormous amount of money and that it will be difficult to re recoup, and that we've spent much less money and we have a better shot at it. Okay, uh, let's just explain that. Uh, the first example, uh, Tina, Daily Beast, she has a lot of original articles. Right. You've just told us you don't have original articles, so you don't have that cost 
cost structure, right? right. Uh, so therefore, you should be slim, trim, and uh, being able to and able to knock out someone who is uh, paying more if you are as good as uh, the Daily Beast. Now, some would argue that your individual column you run, which is the only original part, mm -hmm. uh, may be as good as any column that Tina Brown has, but she's got a hundred and you've only got, got yourself. But, uh, so theoretically, you should be off to a flying start, but you seem to indicate that the cost structure, no matter what it is on the net, is this fair to say, is a difficult proposition to cover uh, with revenue. Is that what you're saying? Uh, exactly. So we're, our investment is in the area of a few million dollars. Um, uh, the Daily Beast investment is in the area of, of certainly more than $10 million, possibly significantly more than that. Uh, so at some point, we think, it's, we think our approach to this is, um, uh, is, is the wiser approach in this new medium. Uh, you said uh, a year ago or so, I think this is fair, correct me if I'm wrong, that you would be break even, let's say now as we speak. Uh, you're not break even, are you? We're pretty close to it. You're pretty close to break even? So what's the economic problem? You want to make money. Okay, why can't you make money? Because the advertisers won't pay no, you no, enough we, money? No, we can, we can, uh, we can make money, and, and, and we are making money. We can make money on what we've invested. I would not know how to make money on what Tina has invested. So you're very optimistic about your chances, even though the uh, circulation did blip up. Isn't this correct to say at one point and went down? It, it did, it did. Well, that was, what, let me that was partly, um, as, as you yourself know about circulation, um, it's um, plastic. Um, and so we've experimented with, with, with a, and, and everyone in this business is, is experimenting um, with, with the ways in which you, in which you aggregate traffic, okay, aggregate now, eyeballs. All right, now eyeballs are important because you sell them to advertisers, right? Exactly. Well, if you got a million eyeballs, that's a lot of eyeballs. You should be able to do very. I mean, that's the same as the New York Times circulation. You're equal to the New York Times. And the New York Times, and this problem that they've also found, is that the um, uh, the hundred dollars that you would get from an advertiser for your million readers offline, um, uh, you get ten dollars online. That, that's a very very important point. Uh, that I'm not sure that everyone who's watching this under, understands, which is there's tons and tons of stuff to read on the net. And uh, all of us may spend tons and tons of time reading it. So you would say, geez, if we're reading it, then uh, someone must be able to make money off of this through, through advertising. But there's so much out there that the uh, price that you can charge uh, is so low then it's very difficult uh, to make money. Right, and remember that, that there's so much, it's not only reading that's at what you can read, there's so much advertising space. So it goes, it goes down. I mean, the Does cost goes. But you keep having, I remember we put up on the screen your three iterations. Yeah, there are ads. But can't you just keep pages and pages and pages out there for more and more ads or not? You, you, you can do that, but advertisers aren't, aren't stupid. Um, um, actually, in, a, in our old jobs, in the old media, we assumed they were stupid, um, um, and we were able, actually, to nicely trick them. But here, it's much harder. Everybody knows how many people are looking at your ads. I mean, it is a, um, um, it is a transparent world. Everybody knows what's, what's going on. And there are so many other places to, there, there, there is, um, in, in the New York Times, only X number of pages. Um, so there is a, an, an amount of exclusivity. In this medium, uh, it, it, it doesn't, there is, there is a limitless supply of advertising space. Uh, you're at a million, say, best case. Yep. Uh, you're getting one-tenth of what you would get if you were a million someplace else. Exactly. Right? Okay, so how many do you have to have watching you is what I would say, but there's a magic phrase for that, unique visitors. You got a million? What do you need to become rich and famous like uh, Rupert Murdoch? You need a lot. How you many? know, 15, one, of, 15 million? one of the things, I, well, I would, I would, you know, the, um, the, the big kahuna. 
Come in um, in this business is Ariana Huffington. And she's um, 15 million, right? Um, yes, 13. and she's yeah, um, and um, um, and even uh, even at that, you know, she is certainly not at at the level of of a of a traditional media company. Um, the um, um, I mean, she's built a nice business there. But one of the things that we're seeing in this new world is that media companies are going to become much smaller. Politico, a good example, um, you know, it has, here's a business that has come in directly competitive with the Washington Post, taken its main franchise reporting on the federal government. Now, the Washington Post is a um, um, $1.45 billion dollar business. Um, You're not yet. Um, guess Politico we'll is a fifteen million dollar a year business. So what what we're seeing is is and this will, this is going to happen all over, these businesses are going to be reduced in size. We've come to an end. The question is, uh, is Newser going to make it and what circulation does it need to make it? Uh, Newser has already made it. It's already made um, it. We're already we're already there. Um, now it's just cream on top. Thank you very much for coming by. Could you shake my hand? I certainly it's will. It's great to see you. And thank you for coming by. And come by next week and learn more about the Digital Age. For the Digital Age, I am James Goodale. Good night and have a good week. <laughs>